wonderful language. Uh, I'm re really happy to be here with you. As mentioned before, I'm the head of the uh, Global uh, Angels Initiative. The Angels Initiative is a non-promotional initiative uh, founded by us from Berliner Ingelheim uh, and working very closely with uh, scientific societies, specifically with the WSO, with the World Stroke Organization. As you heard, stroke is a, a disastrous uh, disease. Is a, it has uh, devastating consequences. Uh, mortality is high, morbidity is high, people are disabled. And uh, now with the new campaign of the WHO, uh, WSO, it's even more clear. Everybody, one of four of us, people above 25 years, will suffer a stroke. Every, uh, so if you count here, uh, one in four will suffer a stroke. And still stroke is not recognized by politicians, uh, by, uh, by the community, that it's such a big uh, and huge burden for, for the patients, but also for the caregivers, for the families, but also for the societies, because to, for rehabilitation, uh, to care for the stroke patient, costs also a lot of money that you could invest much more in prevention and treating stroke. And it's also uh, a scandal that uh, even known since 40 years uh, that uh, organized stroke care, uh, normally called as stroke unit or stroke ready hospital, is not implemented across the world. Even in Europe, which is quite developed, even in Europe, uh, only 30% of the patients have access to stroke care in hospitals who are able to treat these patients. That means 70% of the patients are treated in wrong hospitals. And across the world, it's even worse. And this was the reason why we decided to help the societies to improve stroke care specifically in the acute situation. Of course, prevention, rehab, life after stroke is important. But every year, between 15 to 70 million strokes happen. And these patients have to be treated. And so the goal is quite easy to remember. We need a sufficient coverage with stroke-ready hospitals across the countries. You see here one example. Romania, two years ago, they had 13 hospitals. Now, we achieved together with the Stroke Society there and the Ministry of Health that 43 hospitals are able to treat patients according to the guidelines. But it's not only to have more stroke-ready hospitals. We also need to help the existing stroke units to be better, to be faster, because in the acute phase, Time is the most critical factor. With every second a stroke, after a stroke is happened, the patient loses brain cells, and so this will cause the, the, the devastating prognosis of a lot of these patients. Of course, you can't do it alone, and we are really privileged to work with great societies like the Work Stroke Organization, <coughs> like the ESO, the European Stroke Organization, the patient organizations, but also with other companies and uh, academic groups. And last but not least, with more than 50 national stroke societies, as the SSP here in the Philippines. To make it, to give you an overview, we have five platforms where we are focusing on. The most, uh, and, uh, the most important platform are our 140 angels consultants we have uh, deployed across the world. Angels consultants who help the hospital to improve their processes, to talk with the societies, the national societies, the regional societies, to find a strategy how to improve stroke care. To help this work, we have four adding platforms. One is standardization, because you need to, to standardize the processes of the patient to be fast. Education focused on implementation, community to create a network of hospitals working together, share best practices, 
And last but not least, sometimes the most important, to measure what we are doing. And therefore we created, together with the ASO, together with the WSO, also the Angels Award to recognize uh, hospitals who do quality assessment and have good results. What did we achieve so far? We have 25,000 uh, healthcare professionals throughout the world registered on our webpage from 95 countries. More than 3,300 hospitals are registered. We have more than 150,000 patients in quality registry from more than 1,000 hospitals. And this resulted in Europe, and now we will hear a little bit more uh, later this day about uh, the so-called developing countries uh, outside of Europe. We had 300 award winners at the ASO conference in Europe with 62 diamond winners, which are uh, providing excellent treatment of stroke. Uh, alone in Europe, we uh, helped to set up 140 stroke-ready hospitals. Hospitals who never treated patients before according to the guidelines. So that is really a, a big advantage for these countries. And in a sample of 800 hospitals, we achieved that the treatment was 30% faster and the rate of recanalization re procedure, which is a causative therapy, uh, raised up by 50%. And so uh, we are really grateful that we can work together with these societies, with the society here in the Philippines to help uh, all the healthcare professionals to improve slow care in every country, specifically in Philippines, because every patient counts the same wherever he lives. And it's always great to hear stories like one I just want to tell you, even though my time is up, from the eastern island, far away, uh, somewhere in the Pacific, uh, 3,600 kilometers from the, uh, uh, with a distance of 3,600 kilometers from uh, the continent, and recently a patient has firstly treated uh, with thrombolysis in this hospital because it was possible with the Angel Hospital from Santiago de Chile to do via tele stroke telemedicine to treat this patient, and he recovered fully. These are the stories mm. who not only motivates doctors. But and nurses uh, to do their their work, never-ending work, but also motivates us to to be the partner of these great guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions from our media friends for this particular segment of the corner presentation? Mm -hmm. If not, then we can move the question and answer uh, your questions towards the end during the question and answer portion. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Great. So now, um, you've heard about the ANGELS initiative, what it does, I mean, and how low the cost this is. That's why we are promoting this program. We will now move on to understanding the disease. What is it, and how it's affecting all of us, especially here in the Philippines. So here's introducing to you our next speaker. He is currently the chair of the Neurosonology Group of the Philippine Neurological Association. He's a fellow of the Philippine Neurological Association and Philippine Society of Critical Care Men. He's currently a professor at the Department of Neurology and Psychiatry, mm -hmm. section, section of Neurology of the University of Santo Tomas, and he was the president of the Stroke Society of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the honorary president of Asia Pacific Stroke <laughs> Conference, Professor Dr. Jose Navarro. Thank you very much. And good afternoon to each one of you, Professor Ake, Dr. Thomas. Uh, I will dispense with my own introduction because I know I'm being monitored. I see. I'm <laughs> really two, two minutes, more, so I'll just go straight. I'm talking about the burden of the right? A any disease, when you talk about the burden, there are certain things that we really need to know. For instance, what we have done and this was published in a very reputable journal, the International Journal of Stroke, which was published in 2014, wherein we have written out the real burden of stroke and abilities. So basically these are the things that I'm going to talk to you about this afternoon, and it has been written in this publication. All right, 
So when we look at burden of disease, any disease for that matter, we look at several points. Number one, the incidence, which is how many cases at any given time. Let's say, for instance, how many cases in a year will it occur? The second will be the prevalence. How many of these patients who develop the disease are still in the community, being taken care of, taking medicines, instances like a stroke, how many of them would recur? <coughs> and then the third is how many would die if they develop the disease? And uh, the fourth would be the daily and the quality, which means the disability adjusted like years. So let's say, for instance, if you develop the disease, how much years was lost because of the incidence or because of the disease? So in other words, the younger you are when you develop the stroke, the higher will be your daddy. Can you imagine if you develop a stroke at 40 years and you will live for the next seven, up, up, up until 70 years? For 30 years, you're bedridden. Okay, so that, that's the, the, really the, the burden that you are seeing among patients with the stroke. Uh, unfortunately, in our country, the Philippine data is not too much on the incidence, which means how many patients develop stroke in a year, for instance. Well, this is a very, very expensive study. So up until this time, we still could not get any funding for, for this particular study. <coughs> it's a prospective, as I've said, it's very expensive. It's a long-term study. So which means we, we, we watch one community or one area, and then from the time frame that you started looking at them, and then wait for how many amongst them in one year will develop the stroke. So that's how we would be able to look at the incidence of the new cases of stroke in a year, for instance. <coughs> All right, so in other words, we could not do that even in our country. So what we have done is the prevalence. How many of these patients who develop a stroke would be in the community, being taken care of by their family, taking the medicines, right? And how many would probably would develop the recurrence of the disease? Now, a nationwide survey, there are three nationwide survey in, in our country done in 2003, 2008, and 2013. I'll just call your attention on the last row, the all, okay? And you can see that the stroke prevalence in our country is about 1.4, 1.2 to 1.4 percent. So what does it mean? For every 100 people in the community, you will see that one or two of them had stroke. Okay, so that, that's how you would look at how the, the how common this problem in our community. Just imagine for every hundred, one or two of these patients had stroke. Okay. Now, what I did, in my study, this is a community based, I went to the community, okay, and specifically it is in Morong Rizal. Probably you're aware of this in Morong Rizal, wherein we counted in a big community, in the 19,113 population, we counted how many amongst them had stroke. And we came out with a prevalence of 0.5%. So that's uh, the, the range that we're looking now, it's about 0.5%. And we repeated this study in another area, in, uh, down up north in Kurimao. And we found out that the number that we're looking there is about 1.9%. So that depends again on the age. So the older they are, the higher will be the prevalence. The younger they are, of course, and if you take the whole population, you would expect that your prevalence would be quite low. <coughs> now the death, as was mentioned earlier, you can see that this is the second most common cause of death in our country. This is our DOH. Our data on the leading cause of mortality. So look at this, it's the second most common cause of death after heart disease. This is the expenses that will be incurred by patients to develop stroke. So we have two types of stroke, the ischemic stroke and then the hemorrhagic stroke. And uh, the amount that would be contributed by our insurance system in the Philippines, if you have a stroke, is around 28 to 38,000 pesos. Okay? So probably you can just imagine how much expenses a patient would get into if they would be admitted into the hospital. 
and this is the share that we get from our government. Now, the total population, these are the resources that we have in our country, in the Philippines. And our population of about 100, and mil 100 million, now it's 120 million, there are only 400 neurologists in our country. Only 400 neurologists. And the ratio would be about one neurologist per 20,000 or 300. Okay. And we have only how much? We are, we are attending to almost one per one million or more uh, population. <coughs> and the other training program that we have is only nine in our country, and it's there also a stroke fellowship right now. Okay, the stroke unit, these are units, the graphic units in the hospital where we admit patients who develop stroke. Okay, and, and right now, 2016, say 2019, we have about 49 stroke units in our country. And if we try to calculate following the WSO recommendation of the amount of the number of stroke units, in our country we need about 365 stroke units. And we have only 46 units at, at this time. Now the thrombolysis, that is the drug approved by our FDA, <coughs> this is the only approved drug for acute stroke. What is the what is the role of this drug? It is used to to to, to lyse the clot or to dissolve the clot. Okay. So again, uh, we have a very limited use of thrombolysis in our country, and there was a time that our <coughs> government provided 1,000 vials you know, to be used by for Filipino patients and we will distributed that all over the country. And the rate that we are having now is only about 1.3%. Okay. So if you compare that in some other well-developed countries, let's say for instance in, in Germany or in the United States, we're far, far away. It's only 1.3%. Okay, so there are so many barriers in the use of thrombolysis. This, as I've said, the only drug approved by our by the Fed, uh, FDA. So these are the different barriers of the thrombolysis. Okay, and then I've talked to you about all these demographic data, the burden of stroke, and probably I'd like to end there because uh, this lady, beautiful lady down there, is telling me to shut up. So I, I'll stop. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Navarro. That was a very insightful presentation, don't you agree? Yes. So we now have the data that we need to understand what the disease is and how it impacts the lives of many Filipinos here in our country. So now that you've heard about the ANGELS initiative from Mr. Fisher and the impediments that we face with the disease that is stroke from Professor Dr. Navarro. Now we will have our third speaker who will discuss to you the impact of the disease from a global perspective. So for now, let me introduce to you our third and final speaker. He served as president of the European Stroke Organization for two years, from 2012 to 2014, and was elected full board member of the European Academy of Neurology in 2014. He is a full professor of clinical neurology and director and chair of the Department of Clinical Neurosciences and Prevention at the Danube University in Kremis, Austria. He was also the chair and director of the neurological department of the University Hospital of Tulin. Significant to note is that he is also a, re a renowned personality for setting up the first stroke unit in Austria in 1997 in the same institution. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you our third and final speaker, the current president of World Stroke Organization, Professor Dr. Michael Brennan. Uh, thank you for this charming introduction. Uh, I, I, I won't keep you long, but I do have the task of looking at uh, the developments in the Philippines from a global perspective. So uh, our mission from the World Stroke Organization is a life free from stroke. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be? Would be wonderful. 
So uh, these are the faces you, <laughs> you know. These are the faces you don't know. Uh, but to reduce the global burden of stroke through prevention, treatment, and home care is our mission. That's what we do. The World Stroke Organization was established 2006. It's the only global organization focused on stroke. It has now, that's an old site, over a hundred uh, uh, other organizations under its umbrella. It has about 6,000 individual members. And the special thing now is that uh, we have consultative status at the United Nations and the World Health Organization because we are an NCD and we are uh, a global organization. So just a few days ago, we were speaking at the United Nations General Assembly to defend the issue of, of unified uh, universal health care for stroke patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, the importance of this was carried forward in many documents. So this is the kind of thing we do. We partner with other organizations like the uh, Non-Communicable Disease Alliance and, and uh, other uh, partners we make conferences with, and it's so like the one happening here today. So uh, what is our strategy? Well, I will not go into that. I'll just read to you the headings. We have to increase the global capacity, and this is something where you can help. You can help uh, us. We build awareness and knowledge of stroke. That's where you can help. What is a stroke? A stroke is everything that happens suddenly and is half-sided. Yeah? Half-sided, no movement, half-sided, no feeling, half -sided. language is half-sided because it's one part of the brain, the left part mostly. Yeah? So this is suspect of stroke. So that the message is easy. Yeah? And uh, grow a robust organization, that's what we're doing. So, uh, these are other things. We have, of course, like many other scientific organizations, we have international congresses, we have world congresses. Uh, in, uh, in Montreal was the last one uh, before in Hyderabad, in, in Brazil, uh, all, all over the world. We have a global policy agenda, which is on our website. We have a highly reputed uh, scientific journal. We have an online education tool called World Stroke Academy. And uh, we have the World Stroke Campaign and the World Stroke Day, uh, which is on October 20, uh, 29. It's the World Stroke Day. And tomorrow, there will be a stroke run in the Philippines and uh, in many other countries in the world. So as I said, advocacy global policy with the WHO, the UN, and other organizations. With the ANGELS program, we have decided to team up, and you've already heard what this is about, and we're very proud to have this link and collaboration, because this is one of the few, uh, very few initiatives worldwide that really make a change uh, in the setting and in the uh, uh, treatment for, for patients with stroke. Now, all together, uh, looking ahead, we have other projects that are worth mentioning, like the Future Leaders Program. We have a prevention strategy, which I will extend on if you ask me to. And uh, we have uh, all, all kinds of other activities that are uh, important to us. So, don't be the one, is uh, the current. So one in four, one person in four will have a stroke in his or her lifetime. One in four in the world. Once you reach the age of 25, you'll be one of the four. I'm sorry, but that's the case. Uh, so the message is don't be the one, or be a man in three, whatever you want. So these are the uh, other activities that are ongoing. Uh, around the world, and you can see from the dots in the chart that we are really uh, a global organization and doing the best we can to be heard and to be effective. 
uh, if you have a chance or somebody uh, who is interested to come to Vienna, which is my hometown, uh, we will host uh, the largest stroke conference mm -hmm. next year. Uh, and uh, it will be a real big event. And uh, of course, we will also have angel activities there. So having said this, let, let me make uh, one final remark from what Professor Navarro has said. From my perspective, having now been here in the Philippines the third time, I was uh, once uh, in Luzon and once in the uh, southern area near Mindanao. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, Manila. Um, the, the impressive thing about stroke care in the Philippines is that it has to cover a region which is extremely difficult. I would say it's maybe more easy, Professor Hackett, you would agree, it's more easy to do it in Chile, the Andes, you know? the high mountains, it's mm -hmm. probably easier to develop stroke care because it's a continuity in what we call high up, but on 4,000 islands or more, it is a really a big challenge. So I think apart from the numbers we are talking about, the stroke units and so on, we, we have to think about the geography and the diversity, the ethnicity, all these uh, problems. Uh, and then comes, of course, the very low density of stroke-ready physicians, if I may use the term, uh, people who know what this is about and how to recognize stroke quickly and, and act accordingly uh, to treat the symptoms inside. So my respect, Professor Navarro, and your society, your team, your work, your, let's say your lifelong work, to alleviate the burden of stroke in the Philippines. And I hope that this day today is also successful in driving the issues here in the Philippines even further. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so now we